is that enough to fire them from their... Well, maybe I would, because they're just too crazy. But, but okay, this guy owns the paper. Now, why is he stepping down when he owns his own... Because nobody in Atlanta will have anything to do with his paper. They won't advertise there or support it, because they're afraid that he makes Jews look bad, because whether you like it or not, the modern state of Israel represents Jews to much of the world. So when he speculates that Israel's agents in the United States would assassinate a, a president unfriendly to Israel, it makes people think, some pe it, it fuels conspiracy theories that the Jews run the world. <laughs> I just drove the Paul guy out of the room. <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing on that. Yeah. There, there's no, uh, there's no, le you can boot Abe's at this point. He's just being obnoxious. You can boot him. <laughs> we'll, we'll tackle him next. Um, uh, the, uh, here's the thing on that. Yeah. If the Mossad could actually pull off such a thing, if they could, yeah. why wouldn't they have pulled that off uh, with Saddam Hussein or Ahmadinejad? Who's the, who's the greater threat to the world, right? Yeah. To their, not to the world, to Israel's safety, right? Yeah. They can't get to these people. The Mossad is inefficient at this point. They can't do these miraculous, uh, you know, hits like they used to be able to do. They couldn't do it against Saddam. They can't do it against Ahmadinejad. They're not going to be able to pull it off on Obama, even if they wanted to, right? Where have they not talked about it behind closed doors? I don't know. I doubt it, right? I doubt it. But even if they would be, it's stupid. Okay. So the question is: Is that so bad? The guy needs to sell the newspaper. And the guy needs to sell the newspaper. I mean, like, come on. You know, if if I owned a newspaper, like, who wants to buy a newspaper if, these times? But if I if I owned a newspaper, right? Yeah. I'll be damned if somebody's going to tell me to sell it. I just say, I'm going to close the whole damn thing down, and you're all fired. You're a bunch of assholes, right? And then you, and sorry, customers, you got nothing. All right, so, I mean, this whole story is just weird from the get-go. Just the idea of an owner being told what he has to do. And he should have, you know, it's like free speech in America. That's the whole idea of, of newspapers, right? Like, what was the guy's name? Ben Franklin? Didn't yeah. he? Exercises yeah. fruit. He was a publisher. Yeah, he yeah. posted all kinds of revolutionary, yeah. crazy things, right? Yeah. Wasn't that the whole point of it? Yeah. So this is what the guy's doing. He's putting out there all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't agree with it, but I wouldn't say he has to uh, step down. Okay, what do you? But think? if you make the Jews look bad, like the entire Jewish community can turn on you like that. I mean, <laughs> I know <laughs> from my own experience. Oh, by the way, and it makes it very awkward to live. I, I got to tell you something. Yeah. I'm going to change the subject just a yeah. little bit. Okay. That's so my sister and brother-in-law came to uh -huh. uh, town last week, uh -huh. and they took me out to lunch. Uh -huh. And we hung out for the day. And one of the things they, m my brother-in-law was saying that he's watched. No, he doesn't watch us regularly. Yeah. But he has checked out some of our clips. Right. And he said that he really likes the clips that he's seen so far. Right. And he was wanted to get the lowdown on you. Yeah. So he uh, did. Uh, he checked up on your wiki. Right. And he was actually impressed that you had gone. Right. You know, mahai gisa la hai gisa. You know, you went from from this extreme to that extreme. Yeah. And he was impressed by you, and he wanted to get some details. So I filled him in on some stuff, and I told him that you had been kicked out of various shuls in yeah. your, during your conversion process, and when yeah. my brother-in-law actually supported the shuls in their decisions. And I and I was like, whoa, because you know me, I say you can't throw stones unless right. you're, you know what I mean? People yeah. in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Yeah. That's basically my thing. Right. Right? So I don't believe any one of those five shuls is so clean that they have a right to kick you out. And I, like I said it oh, almost two years ago, and I'll say it again, I think a lot of that was financially motivated. You know, some big maher doesn't like you, had it in for you, said he's going to take away his money from those shuls, right? That's personally, I have, you know, maybe that's like, ooh, lush and hurrah, that's lush and hurrah to say it's a just, just such thing, you know? But uh, it proved me wrong. I mean, I've, none of those are impervious to uh, criticism, and it's very possible. So, I mean, it's like these... I don't, I, I, I don't think that you should have been kicked out of any of them. You certainly wouldn't have been kicked out of my shul, if I had a shul. Have I ever kicked you out of my house? No. <laughs> I would not have kicked you out of my shul. I wouldn't kick anybody out, right? Unless they did something at the place, like, you know, bring a bomb to the shul. Like, there's been people that have done that lately, right? Or, like, you try to have sex inside the shul, right? You know, like... You know, that would have been disgusting. Or right. something like that, then I have reason. But, but, but... For what you did? Are you kidding me? That's just ridiculous. So I would, I, 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 uh, I stood up for you against my brother-in-law, but he was like part of the uh, 
Yeah. He was part of the establishment. That's because he's got kids. Does he have kids? Well, let's see. Where do my nephews come from? Yeah. Yeah. So you have different... I think you look at the world differently when you have kids. And also when you're married. When you're married and when you have kids, then you have so many different uh, relationships and vulnerabilities. Like when you have those, when you have children, you're much more vulnerable. And when you're married, you're more vulnerable. And therefore, you want to make a safer environment around you. And so that means getting rid of the riffraff. If you look, want to talk about how tight the women are at those shows. <laughs> Yes, marriage. When will we see me in a Talos Godal? I bet before I'm 50. Now, I admit I said that in my 30s before I was 40, but I think in the next five years, I just have to get my business going. If I get my business going, then, then I can get married. But uh, while I'm struggling financially and can't pay for health insurance, etc., then it's, it's really hard to meet women. I mean, I think women can just smell my like desperation and struggles. They can just sense that... This guy's having a hard time staying afloat. And so I have absolutely no confidence meeting women. I was at an event last week and just, it was filled with attractive young w women. And I did not have the confidence to approach anyone who was above a six. Like someone who was like middle looking, you know, I could approach her. Or I, like I chatted up this ugly woman, but I couldn't approach any of the hot ones. I just didn't have the confidence. Do you what, get that way where... Wait a second, one second, one second. Let me ask you a question. Because mm -hmm. you've read my book. Yeah. I have a spin on this. Yeah. I have a different take. Yeah. The ones who are like the tens, yeah. which I doubt because I don't think there's any Jewish women locally that are going to be tens, but let's just say there were, right? Yeah. Would they have a lot of guys around them? Yeah. Okay, well, then I would stay away from them. Mm -hmm. If they already have a lot of guys, why? Because you're the guy who's not all over them. Yeah. So that makes you desirable. Mm -hmm. Yeah? He doesn't need me. What do you mean you don't need me? Right? Uh, so uh, if if she was by herself, yeah. then, I, then I would say, okay, go talk to her. Mm -hmm. Because then it might be that everybody's too um, wimpy. Intimidated, too, yeah. Too, yeah, too intimidated to go talk to her. Yeah. So you'd be different. You'd be the one go, going to talk to her. Yeah. I'd say, just don't do what the rest of the crowd is doing. If they're not talking to her, then go talk to her. If they're talking to her, then be different. Be different than everybody else. Stand out. Right? Everybody else is vanilla. You're going to be Cherry Garcia. I'll be like Abraham Avina. Yes, you got to be different. You got to. We got a new a new person in the in the room. We have we've had a whole SoCal series. Eliezer. SoCal. Uh, SoCal Eliezer. Uh, I'm going to guess you're from Southern California. <laughs> and your name is Eliezer. Now uh, identify yourself because I don't know any Eliezers from. So I've now got students paying the full rate, so now I'm not looking for a job, I'm looking for students who are willing to pay my full rate. One hundred dollars for an Alexander Technique lesson, I'll take you to heaven and back. Uh, That's so, not going to bring in people. Oh, that is not going to bring... Here, hit the viewers one more time, because that guest just turned into a viewer. I want to see who that... You have six people in there. Okay, so we got Aves, so we got Goyam19, who won't tell us his, his or her name. Malachi, hey, how's it going? Sokal Eliezer... Henry, and now the Lakewood Rob, who I, by the way, I quoted you before because it, I just wanted, I pointed out to the lady mm -hmm. that when uh, Chaim Amala posts on his blog, he's speaking for two people because I don't even need to post anymore yeah. on your blog, right? I don't need to comment because Chaim Amala is all over it, but we are saying the same thing. We're like the same voice. So would you like a slice of humble pie? Uh, yeah, can we get to anything I wanted to talk about, or we just yeah the NFC them? Championship game? Okay, was that a games? Were, were those amazing games yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Were those amazing? Yeah. I mean, seriously, right? When you watch football, and like your team's not in it, right? Yeah. yeah. Your team is gone. Yeah. They're eliminated back on like week three. Yeah. If you like me, <laughs> you're a Rams fan, right? So like, all you can hope for is a good game, something exciting, something that you remember more than five years later. Yeah. Yesterday, I think, provided two of those games. Yeah. Was that amazing? Yeah, I was really surprised how poorly uh, Tom Brady played and the Patriots, like, Flacco outplayed Brady. I'm yeah, surprised. That game should have been in overtime. Yeah. Let's say, let, if not for the, a, a, a kicker shanking a 30 yard field goal, that game is in overtime yeah. and that very likely could have been Baltimore. Yeah. Okay, that game. That game was so close to going the other way. 